Chairwoman White, Committee Woman, Committeeman Randolph, Committeeman Randolph, Committeeman McKinney, yes. Committeeman Moore, Present. Committeeman Moore, Present. Committee Woman Hyman, Present. Committee Woman Hyman, Committee Woman Guerrero, Present. Committeeman Ogier, Ogier. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Committeeman Randolph, thank you. That's all, Madam Chair. Thank you, thank you Brian. Um, thank you. Afternoon, you all. I see we have a majority of our community committee members here, and we have some council members with us as well. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you all can, hopefully you have the agenda in your email. Um, I don't know if, if, Brian, you're able to display that. Um, if not, that's fine. But we are, this is our second redistricting committee meeting, and I'm glad we are still able to have it virtually. Our next one will be next Thursday, um, February the 9th. Uh, so just make sure that you have that down. And so we definitely should be able to get some things done between that week. For just to let everyone know, we received a letter communication with information that we should have already known from the Shelby County Election Commission. We received that letter due to our formation of the redistricting committee. And it says to please have all decisions mapped, finalized, done by April the 14th. So originally in the resolution, we had it as April 30th. And so that takes us up about two weeks. Um, so you all should receive that in your email. And I want to make sure that the public know that we also receive that information directly from the Shelby County Election Commission so that they can ensure they have everything updated on their websites and in their files before this upcoming municipal election. Were there any thoughts or questions or commentary on that? All right. Um, also, next on the agenda, we have introduction of new community community committee members. Um, so, just to make sure the public remembers and knows all of our committee members that we have, if you are able to, everyone who's on the community committee um, who's been nominated, if you can just say your name, who recommended you or nominated you. And then also, as part of the resolution, we ask that these nominations come from the background of education, civil rights, law, business, nonprofit, or faith-based. So after you say your name and who nominated you, please tell us the background in which you fall in, even if it's more than one. And since it was brought up last council meeting by Councilman Morgan, um, if you have intention on running in the upcoming election, I think we know about the... Uh, council members who may be non-term limited who have talked about running or already filed to run, but we just want to make be transparent for the community because we really reveled on that topic last time. So just to repeat, and I'll put in the chat too, um, or Brian and Ivy can put in the chat, uh, name, who recommended you, what background do you fall in, and even if it intersects, and if you have any intention on running in the 2023 October election. And we can start with Dr. McKinney. All right, uh, Dr. Charles McKinney. I uh, believe I was nominated by um, Martavius Jones. And I'm here in the category of education and I am not running for office. Thank you. Ms. Bennett? Good afternoon. My name is Lisa Bennett. I was nominated by Councilwoman Rhonda Logan, and I am uh, falling in the categories of education and nonprofit. And I'm not running for election ever, <laughs> or an office ever. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Curry was absent. Uh, Ms. Guerrero? 
Yes, hi everyone. My name is Gisela Guerrero. Um, I was nominated by Councilman Tanali, and I am um, with the Faith Based um, Organization Group. And any intentions on no. election? I'm not running for office. Thank you. Mr. Hare? Yes, Dr. Derek D. Harris. Uh, I was nominated by Swearingen, uh, Councilman Swearingen from Washington. Um, I come from the nonprofit sector, um, and I won't be one of the dog catchers. Oh, welcome, Mr. Harris. Um, Mr. Moore, Vice Chair of the Committee, Mr. Moore. Good afternoon, everyone. Kermit Moore. I was nominated by Councilwoman. Cheyenne Johnson, uh, nonprofit, and no, I will not be running for office at any time. Thank you. Mr. Ogier? Uh, Mark Ogier, I was nominated by Councilman Warren. Um, my main focus is on nonprofits and education, and I'm not planning on running for office. Mr. Randolph. Ian Randolph, uh, NAACP nonprofit, and I am not running for office. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, I'm sorry, Boyd. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Berlin Boyd. I was nominated by uh, Councilman Frank Colvett representing um, business sector as well as civic sector. And uh, yes, I am planning on running for office. Thank you. And Ms. Hyman. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brooke Hyman. I was nominated by Councilman Chase Carlisle. I would do anything to avoid running for office and being on the Zoom with the city council. The city council. <laughs> Uh, and I'm representing the legal field and civic field. Well, thank you, Ms. Hyman um, and Mr. Boyd for joining us on this meeting and all the community committee members who have just joined to make sure that you're just giving your time and your effort towards looking at redistricting and if we're doing something different um, and if we are and if we aren't for this upcoming year. Um, next on the agenda, we had the legal process to be explained by Attorney Allen Wade. Ms. Backus is Attorney Wade online. <clears throat> Madam Chair, I do not believe Mr. Wade is on is on the uh Teams meeting. I okay. don't see. His, I don't. I do not see him on the list. Okay. Uh, so we just want to make sure um, committee members and the public who are along with us that we are able to get an explanation for the current changes that happened before the special district four election, in which we got our own uh, city councilwoman Janice Warren to Washington. We just want to understand the reasonings and the explanations behind attorney wage changes. And I think once we are able to get that discussion from him, that can further help us see in the manner in which we're either changing districts or which we're not. Um, so since we don't have that, hopefully maybe we can get in contact with him and he can get on before we get off, Mr. Backus, um, or not, we will ask him to come do that on the 9th. So before we so left, go ahead, Mr. Beck, what's that? No, I was just saying, so noted, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, and I'm looking also, we're monitoring the chat. If you're needing to say anything, uh, make sure you're either raising your hand on Teams or putting it in the chat, and we can definitely put you all in the queue, put everyone in the queue. So moving on with the agenda for our committee discussion items, we had a robust discussion from Mr. Benny Smith and also 
Dr. D. Harris about how the legalities and formations of districts work, how they can work, and how they have been implemented in our closest example, which is Shelby County, for their elections. And this brought us to forming committees. And with these committees, um, we're looking at mapping and communication. And so with these subcommittees, we have some discussion items that are coming before those. So we can, we'll probably go in, thank you, Dr. Warren, um, in this order, non-term limited members, notification and communications, present maximum mapping tools and scenario planning. And we have city mapping on the line for that. Also map reviews and mapping precincts. Um, Councilman Morgan, I think you're on. You had brought up the issue or maybe non-issue of non-term limited members. Did you think we should revisit that for this committee or is that something that a discussion is held on? No, I mean, I still, I think it's a fatal flaw of the committee to have um, uh, people drawing the lines for races in which they intend to run. Uh, you know, I, I just think from a public perception, we're shooting ourselves in the foot as we're get, trying to even start this. Um, so that, I mean, that, that would be my primary concern. Do I think it's the, the opinion I have is the majority opinion of this committee or the city council? No. Do I think it's the majority opinion of the public? Yes. Um, uh, so that would be my, that would be my feelings towards those. So, um, you know, we can, we can sit here and discuss it, but at the end of the day, uh, I, I don't expect much to, to change um, in terms of the, the work of this committee. Okay. I just wanted to give, give space to revisit anything if we needed to. Thank you. Um, Councilman Warren. Thank you. I, I think if I remember correctly from our attorney, it's our legal duty to vote on, on these boundaries that's set out in law that we're required to set them and make changes. So uh, even though it may look bad, uh, it's what we're supposed to do based on state law. So I think we're going to have to go ahead and do it and try to do it fairly enough to where we won't look bad. Uh, you know, if we're obviously doing something to gerrymander it like they've done the state legislature uh, and what they did to the national district for their Democratic congressman, well, then, you know, we'll look bad. But hopefully what we're going to do is to do something that makes sense and is fair. So uh, I think it's our responsibility, and it's nice having uh, members on, on board. And I'd just like to say, Marshall, it's nice to see your face. We've never met, and I appreciate you serving. Thanks, man. Thank you, Councilman. Um, I agree. I agree with everything that Dr. Warren said, too, and thank you for bringing that point up as well. Um, if we need to revisit this toward the end, we definitely can at any point during a committee um, or if it comes up in committees further. And also just thinking of ways that we can maintain, grow and maintain the public's trust in this process is going to be crucial. Madam Chair, I just got a text from Alan. He's driving in the middle of the streets and the mess that's out there. And he was informed yesterday that we were going to reschedule the meeting. Following up, he got the, the email saying we're going to do it virtually. I'll text him and let him know that we're on virtually, but for him not to try to get on until he gets somewhere safe. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, definitely tell him don't uh, log on at any point in the car. Uh, but if he can log on as soon as he gets to his destination, hopefully home. Thank you, Dr. Warren. Um, And so we have a comment in the chat, just putting it out loud. And if anybody wants to comment or answer it, uh, community member Bennett says, I'm not sure if this is a correct procedure, but is it appropriate to have any community and community member included who intends to run for office? And that's different from what Dr. Warren mentioned. Did you want to expound on that, Ms. Bennett, or if anyone wants to address that? If not, that's fine. No, I can. Um, it's just a, after hearing what uh, Councilman Morgan had to say in our previous meeting and what he said today and listening to what Dr. Warren 
has said as a legal obligation uh, for council members. Um, it's just a question for me. And that's why I said I'm not sure if this is the correct process or the procedure, but it is a question I have. And Dr. Warren. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, I think the issue to that is uh, it depends upon how you do it. So if what you're on here doing is trying to make sure you draw lines that are advantageous to you, great, you know, then that's going to show. But if you're on here listening to your colleagues and trying to come up with something that's fair, I'm personally here because I think that 13-member district that they have at the county commission is not really good. And I, I think that what we have with our super districts is good. And I'm a super district guy. So, you know, I'm, I'm telling you how I feel. But, you know, I, I thought that point of view needs to come across to the commission uh, and to, or to this committee to know uh, that those of us who are in super districts think that super districts provide uh, a sort of oversight where you're not just pulling for one little neighborhood at a time. You're thinking more big city, whole city, uh, as opposed to um, a small district. And uh, that seems to have worked well uh, up until this point by providing equal representation for people throughout the city. So before we went and divided the city into 13 districts, I would like to be able to speak against that. So that's why I'm on the committee today. Thank you, Councilman Warren. And I think, um I wish Alan Way was on here to confirm, um, but Ms. Hyman is, and maybe she has insight on Mr. Harris. I think we're beyond the point of where we could even decide to make single member districts before this election. Um, I think that would be, if someone would want to do that in the future, they wouldn't come out of this committee. Um, also, we have Councilman Jones in the queue, and then Mr. Boyd. Yeah, I was about to, uh, to my knowledge, confirm the fact that this committee cannot change it to where we have single member districts before the election. That would have to be a ballot initiative. And keep in mind, we can only do that during even years. So we wouldn't be able to do that this year. Uh, as far as the concern of having a member on this particular body, or, or going back to the, to the makeup of this, as you mentioned, uh, Dr. Warren, it is the obligation of the council to do so. So it could, could have been done just by the 13 of us. But what we sought to do, we sought to invite members of the community as to have a more transparent process in doing so. So by our potentially having as many as 26 members, to have one person to sway things in their direction, I think it's very unlikely for that to be the case. And I'll, you know, not to, not to dismiss anybody's concern, but to have, even if it's one, two, or even five people on here, that may not necessarily change what would be the overall vote. Now, keep in mind, the recommendation of, of this committee is just that, the recommendation. So the council itself can accept or reject whatever the recommendation that comes out of here, or even modify, that's the word, or even modify whatever the recommendation is. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thanks, Chair Jones. Um, I do want to say, for the record, we had Councilwoman Robinson on with us. Um, also, we have my community member selection, Attorney Janika White, who was on with us. And I think those are the only two who joined. Uh, so we can show them as present. And then, Mr. Boyd, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I was just going to say exactly what uh, Chairman uh, Jones said. It's something that needs to be a referendum item if you're trying to change your districts to a single member district, um, the, your, the structure of your body. But I will say this this committee is only a, a recommendation uh, committee. Uh, I, we, we don't really impact or influence uh, the decisions rendered by the council. Ultimately, the council will have votes in the say. Uh, it's, it's strictly a recommendation book body, so um, that's just my opinion about it and uh, just look forward to serving thanks thank you and thanks for being here um also so moving on down i'm going to say that we can discuss notification and communication on the subcommittee i think that falls under there um but also precinct maximum 
Mr. Blankenbeckler, do you have, or Mr. Dr. Harris, do you have information, once again, I wish we um, had Attorney Wade on here at this point, information on precinct maximum for the Mr. So, City Council? So Madam Chairman, the precinct uh, uh, the falls under the auspices of the uh, Shelby County Election Commission. Uh, I believe state law, and I'm not a lawyer, but I believe state law requires uh, the precincts to be no larger than 6,000 uh, folks within the precinct. Uh, but again, that falls under the Election Commission. And, I, and I, let, me, let me also add that whatever decisions are made or maps that are drawn or anything that we um, make changes to, um, there still may be changes on the Election Commission uh, on the side of the Election Commission to make those fit within the boundaries that they've already set. Uh, there could be blocks uh, that could be moved uh, because they actually control the, the precincts. But to answer your question specifically, I believe it's 6,000 folks per precinct. But again, and Dr. Harris, what? can you expand upon what you just said? Okay. About still having the propensity to be changed at the Election Commission? So, and, and I think this is this is less likely to happen uh, in this process. And let me let me let me rewind. In in the process that we did in the county, when we did the county lines, um, all of the precincts were changed, um, or the nomenclature was changed based on, I believe it was state law or the way the state decided to redraw lines statewide. Um, and so we used to have what we call precinct number or box numbers, and now. And, and they were driven by house districts for the most part, and now they're done by county commission districts. So because county lines can't be split, and I don't want to go into a lot of technical detail, city lines can be split, so it's probably going to be less of a problem during our process. However, if there is a conflict with something that we do in terms of precincts, then the election commission would end up coming back and superseding that. I don't think that's going to happen now because most of the big changes have already occurred uh, during the last process. But I just kind of want to caution us that we're not in the precinct business. We would only be in the district business, so to speak. Yes, and I do remember um, Attorney Wade telling us last year that city redistricting did wait until after state and county to avoid issues such as that. Um, so I'm sure that's what you were referring to. Thank you for that. Ms. Hyman? Yes, I had a question. Um, some of the things that you were mentioning, would it be possible for us to request a packet of information from both the Election Commission Attorney Wade? And I know I was not the first meeting, so if that's been done, that's good. But I, I would like for us not to speculate about some of these things and to have it written out in a format that we can make clear to the public and clear to the members about what our steps are. So I know we want to have a visual aid from Attorney Wade, but I think it would be more beneficial for us to have something in writing. We could also uh, place that on the, on the web for people to see than a quick PowerPoint presentation. I, I'd be more empowered by a written document and a verbal presentation. And the same with some of the questions we have for the election commission. Uh, I don't know if this would be appropriate, but I think as a committee, we should determine what items we need from what body and send them a written request so that we can have our information and not speculate on something so serious and to avoid the things that Mr. Harris said that we're getting it directly from the source and not trickle down. I definitely agree, Ms. Hyman. Um, that was the intention of having an an explaining and discussion session from a county way. Um, and having him bring that information. And so a lot of that we're waiting on from that source. Um, but I definitely agree with you. Visual aids do help all the time, uh, council members, public, and committee members on here. And so what we can do is see what visuals and information that we can get from attorney Wade before him coming back on the night. Um, so we're able to share that with each other and share that with the public. Um, if you are, if you have any, and this is everyone, any suggestions on the particular information that should be requested from both parties, being the election commission and attorney Wade, 
um, that we can hopefully have before next Thursday, please submit those via email um, so we can compile those and see what we can get together. But I think that's a great suggestion, Ms. Hyman. And so what we can do is what visuals and information they will try to carry the brain by Councilman you're not on mute. Is it? Are you speaking for here? Councilman yeah, Logan? Yeah, Councilman Logan, she wasn't on mute. That was the background of our video plan. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so that information will be requested as well. Um, and then up next, we have city mapping to discuss the mapping tools and scenario planning that may be at our disposal for this process. Mr. Black and Scott, uh, Scott Blank and Beckler, city mapping. And for the record, I have no intention of running for any public office. Um, software wise, the, the mapping software that we use here in mapping is a product by ESRI called ArcMap. Uh, we also get data from the census data, which uh, has been provided to you. Uh, as far as what we can provide for you guys, if you decide you want to make changes, we can recalculate uh, population values for any changes that you guys are making it as, as far as the, the map uh, council districts. Um, uh, we're, we're here to provide whatever you guys need uh, in this process. And can you say that again, you can repopulate what? I so, so if you move a precinct, a, a voter precinct from say council district one to council district two, uh, if you want those numbers recalculated uh, to see what those are, we can do that here within the software uh, fairly quickly. Um, so uh, including, you know, the, the number of race numbers as far as African-American, white, other uh, Hispanic, uh, or just the general total population. Is, uh, Usually, uh, to, to answer uh, Ms. Bennett's question, it, it recalculation can happen usually within 10, 15 minutes, depending on how complicated we're, uh, we're making it as far as the number of, of stuff that gets moved around. And Mr. Blankenbeckler, just for us and the public, can you explain the role that city mapping plays in the overall redistricting process? Initially, we were contacted to, to help with the analysis of the redistricting. So the, the maps that, that were used for the November election, initially I did the analysis of what the population uh, breakout based on the new counts or the new voting precincts that we got from the county uh, in order to try to keep the the council districts balanced. So um, I'm not sure exactly how much of the the data has been provided to the each of the count uh, committee members, but the spreadsheet that has how many, uh, what the population breakout for each of the voting precincts, that was compiled by this office. Um, we, uh, what I did there was I took the census data by census uh, block and then compiled it into the, the voting precincts. Uh, and then from there, you know, tried to make the precincts match as close as possible to what they previously existed and then just moved a few precincts around in order to keep the numbers balanced. After that, we I turned all that data back over to Mr. Wade and, and he did his, uh, whatever he was going to do with the, the data. 
after that, he, he made changes and provided that those changes back to us, and we made the changes and re recalculated the data and, and sent that back to him. Okay. Thank you. That's, um, that's very helpful. Chair Jones, did we also, Mr. Harris, did your hand go down? Yeah, yeah, it went down. I, I think um, Mr. Brackenberger explained it. I just kind of wanted to give a give a like a layman's explanation of what what he was saying about uh, changes in numbers. Did you still want to do that? Well, no, I think he explained it pretty well. When somebody else has questions about it, but just 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 a just a quickie. Whenever when whenever one thing is moved, so so we change something in one precinct or one area, it will it will likely affect um, other areas. In some ways dramatic, and in some ways not so dramatic. But but the, the number one thing we got to have is a balanced population. And I think there's always confusion about when we're doing redistricting, whether or not we're doing it based on um, voter precincts, the number of voters within the precinct. And this is a census thing, so it's total population. And so whenever it, and, and the confusing thing sometimes with with folks when, when we talk about redistricting is. Generally, there's a number, a good popula a population number that you should number you should hit. For example, if we were dealing with 100,000 people in 10 districts, each district would have 10,000 people. Well, in a lot of communities, people may or may not live in 10,000 chunks. So the most difficult part when you're doing redistricting is that finding that fine balance to make sure that the populations are balanced as much as possible. They won't necessarily all be even or exactly perfect, but I know I talked about in the last meeting about that that population deviation, and we can obviously talk about that in the next meeting. But um, whenever you move one thing, it changes something somewhere else. So, and if you change something dramatic in one area, it's probably, you know, likely going to have a dramatic effect somewhere else, and you're going to have to move things around and maybe the entire map in order to balance that back out. So I just kind of want to throw that out. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Um, Councilman Jones, and then we're going to go to the questions in the chat. Um, what I have, I don't know if we've received this information, it may have been in a uh, deluge of emails that we have, but would be just the peer census data. Uh, I have not seen it. I think that would be helpful information. That's because that's the, the basis for this meeting together to see what those numbers are. And from there, that's why I think we can start uh, looking at those numbers because I think in, in the past, um, well, I would just think that when we have this discussion, that's the, the core data that we need to be working with. Uh, you know, we can look at it based upon the last 10 years, 20 years, whatever the case may be. But even if we, was, even if we were starting anew, which I can't say that we are, that still would be important information for us to have and to, and to discuss and, and to deliberate over. So if, if you can, uh, if there's, I don't know what format it's in, uh, Mr. Blankenbeckler, uh, probably resend re that out, even if it is from a precinct and a census tract data. I don't think, I don't recall seeing that. That would be helpful. No, the data was, the data was not used at the census tract level. The census tract is, was too large in order to, um, to, to provide the data and census tracts don't necessarily follow um, the voting precincts. So in order to get a better population uh, for each of the voting precincts, I had to go with the census's smallest level of data that provided uh, enough information to, to do that, which is the census block level data. Um, Providing census block level data it would be difficult. Uh, you can actually download it from the census site, uh, although I, I wouldn't recommend that their site is horrible to use. Um, the data had to be aggregated to the to the voter pre, uh, the voting precincts that were provided to us by the the county. Um, well, even if we have it based upon the precinct level, that that would be that would be okay. I don't think that, you know, I've seen it in the past. I may have seen it back in 2015 when I was first running, but 
for us to be looking. And, when, and that would have been 20, that, like I said, that would have been 2015 numbers, which would have been based on the 2010 census. And so uh, if we can have that based upon the 20, the most recent census, that's what I was uh, referencing and think I would, we, we would find helpful. Uh, I, I, that data has been provided to the council. I, I don't know if it's been distributed to the committee uh, members itself. No, was it provided to Mr. Wade or was it provided to one of the no, council members to distribute? Uh, Brian Bacchus has has that data. Okay. okay. Um, the, the one thing I would know. All the committee members have yeah, the one the one caveat I would note on that is there there is a, a fight going on between the the city and the census because there's some contention about the numbers. Uh, so the numbers that I use and that have been provided are the stuff that the city is contesting. I don't have anything other than that data to work with. Okay, well, no, the, the data that you have is fine because, you know, that probably could be a question for Mr. Wade, too. And from the standpoint, what if that, if there's no resolution between uh, the city and the, the Census Bureau before that election? What happens then? But absent of having that, I think we just have to go on the information that has currently been provided because if we know how... Um, uh, disputes like that take place, we probably will be looking at uh, next year or the year after that before we have any resolution to that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Agree. Um, and Mr. Baggins, if we can get, when we do a email wrap up with the minutes, we can send that data if it's not too large or however it's best sent in a folder or however. Um, so we can have that um, Mr. Board and Mr. Hyman, was it on this topic or was it on another topic? I was going to go to the questions in the chat. It was on this topic. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Board. Just real quick, um, do we know how many districts are impact impacted by uh, population loss? No, that information would be in the census data as well. Okay. And that, uh, Council, we have a question as well. Could you, could you provide us with um, the map, you know, you can even say in 2021 versus the map with the figures in 2022. That way we can see the changes that have been made precinct level and it will show us uh, the changes that were made. In addition to that, a current map with every district and showing who gained and who lost population in an adjoining Excel spreadsheet that you use to populate it. That way we can see the maps we had just a year ago versus the change we had based on the special election. And separately, a map that includes every district with the, you know, the little Excel thing that feeds it to show us who has gained and lost population. And if possible, on the precinct level, showing us what areas within that district were most impacted by the population loss. I think we can also, Ms. Hyman, put that on our request to Attorney Wade to be able to be provided. Was well, that what you were I mean, thinking? No, no. I, w I want to get it from the mapping office. From the mapping office. Okay. Mr. Yeah. Beckler, are you all able to provide that information of changes? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, we haven't done any analysis of population loss. Uh, at the precinct level, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the priest are you talking about comparing 2020 census data with the existing voting precincts or comparing it to the voting precincts as they existed prior to this current redistricting? Both. But, but I, I think she said district level not precinct level or did you say both no, I, I said both i said both district and precinct mm -hmm. yeah because we'll see it as a district but if we're going to be discussing lines i also want to see the precincts that were most affected so that we can be mindful of what mr harris said 
and the numbers that we have to maintain in this. I, there's not a general answer. If we're going to do it, we're going to have to get down to the macro to micro level. And I think that would be more appropriate coming from mapping. We can have, uh, we can ask Attorney Way to give an analysis, but I think we should get the raw data from the mapping division. Is that able to come from your office, Mr. Blackenbeck? Yes, ma'am. It'll take us some time to compile that for you, but it, it can be done. Do you think we'll have it by next Thursday, or should we be expecting a little longer for that? I don't think we'll be able to get it done by next Thursday. Uh, it'll probably take me a, a couple of weeks to get that together and, and compiled for you. Okay. Um, so this is the beginning of February. So we can check back on our next, our meeting after next, uh, once we set that here today. Thank you. Thanks for that, Ms. Hyman. Uh, Dr. Harris. So, so I, I think part of the problem that Mr. Blackenbeck is going to have, the, as I said before, so we got, we're dealing with two different sort of sets of information. We've got the census data, which is broad and track driven. And then you have the precinct data, which is under the auspices of the election commission and actually the state. So we got a lot of split precincts here in Shelby County. And so part of the problem that I see that, that we're going to run into is, um, to just put it this way, precincts that existed um, during the last even elections, city elections, no, many of those no longer exist. The entire nomenclature of the precincts has changed, and they are now driven by county commission districts. So it, it's going to be probably pretty difficult to, to match apples and apples from a precinct level. He's, that, that work is probably going to have to be done, and correct me, Mr. Black and Becker, if I'm, if I'm incorrect, at the block and maybe the track level because we're not going to be dealing with apples and apples. We've got whole new precincts. Things are completely different. The names are different. Um, they're not they're not state house driven like they used to be just a few years back. They're county commission driven, and so we may you know it, it may take some time to do that. The the election commission is actually um, the place that we would probably go to find that information and get a good comparison. So in other words, we're going to have two different sets of information. And I, let me make a, just a humble suggestion that we get the information, as someone mentioned a minute ago, in a spreadsheet, raw data, the census data, and then we try to get what we can from the election commission for the precinct information. As I said before, it is not the same. It, it is not going to matter. In other words, precinct A just a few years ago was no longer precinct A. It could be precinct X, so to speak. So what 75, 6 used to be now is probably 09-01A or something. So it's, 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 it's different. It's going to take a little while. So just to be sure, you said suggesting requested precinct information that Ms. Simon was talking about from the Election Commission and then the raw data from mapping? Yes. Otherwise, and I, and I know, you know, I think that's part of the problem. Correct me, Mr. Blackenbeck, am I wrong? Is, is that going to be the difficulty you have on your side? Because I know the election commission controls, controls those precincts. Mostly. Uh, the, the issue is going to be, again, going back and getting the census data from the 2000 census. The We're talking about a 10-year difference in population movement um, the the voting precincts that existed in 2020 or actually in even in 2021 and the voting precincts that existed today the they don't really split census blocks so we're not going to have an issue there um, but it's going to be take some time in order to to because we're we're doing all of the the voting precincts. You know, currently, let's see, there are 102 voting precincts within the city of Memphis for the 2022. Calculating the values for all of those is going to take a little bit of time, uh, and then 
because there's no apple to apple comparison for the 2022 voting precincts compared to the 2021 voting precincts, we're going to have to do this for both sets of data. So you'll get the total population uh, and demographic data for each of the voting precincts for 2021 with the 2020 data and the 2010 uh, data. And then the same thing with the current uh, voting precincts in order so that you can see the, the movement of, of data or the movement of people within a voting precinct, the, the boundaries of that voting precinct as they exist now and then. I'm not sure if that makes sense for y'all. <laughs> no, it 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 made it made sense to me. Um, yeah, it that it, it made it's sense. a little bit more complicated than the question that was asked. That's what I the point I was trying to make. I mean, uh, that, and, that's exactly what I want, though. I agree with uh, what Mr. Boykin. Yeah. That's that's exactly what I want to see. I don't think it's wise for us to lose anything before we know exactly where we came from. Right. And why those changes were driven. Now, I have another quick question uh, of Mr. Blank and Beckler. Uh, you mentioned that we have 102 voting precincts for 2022. Do you remember what that number was previously? And you don't, you don't have to be. Not right offhand, no. Okay. Well, could you give me a ballpark? Do you think it was reduced by 10, 25? Was it a, or would it just be speculation? Uh, at this point, it would just be speculation. Okay, thank you. Chair, this is John. And just to, speak, please. Oh, yes, I was going to say just a reminder that precinct lists were given to all members at the first meeting, um, but that can also be resent. Um, or if you don't have it, just let let us know and we can get a copy printed out or, or sent directly to you. Um, yes, Councilwoman Johnson. Thank you so much. Um, my question kind of centers around some information which we have already received from uh, our attorney Wade. In the beginning, with his new recommendations that we voted on, we were given the different precincts that were added and subtracted. Mr. Blankenberg, did you provide that information for him? No, ma'am. Okay, you said that you went in and you added and subtracted in various settings. I need clarification on what you actually did. All right, so what, what I did was I took the precincts that were provided to us by the county. Once I had the population totals, I used the previous council district boundaries, and if a voting precinct was entirely within uh, a existing council district, then it stayed within that district. All the voting precincts that fall along the margin were at that point up for grab as far as whether it needed to be within council A or council B. And I would move, move those around until I had a balance of population among all of the seven uh, council districts while still trying to maintain the current makeup of the um, of the council districts uh, as far as minority uh, representation or not. Okay, when you did that, you did not provide a list of which precincts went from one location to the next? No, because the precincts itself ha had changed so radically, there was no way to uh, compare apples to apples at that point. So how can we identify which precincts have actually been moved into another precinct? For instance, I know that Area 7, District 7, expanded quite a bit. So which precincts were added to District 7? And what, how is that data provided? So that, so so districts that got added to council districts 
farther to the west. That occurred because of the de-annexation that okay. occurred on the east side of the city. Uh, in order to maintain a, a population balance among all of the, the council districts, some of the, the districts on the western side had to lose some voting precincts in order to make up for population loss on the eastern okay. side of it. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Which precincts were they, they that was added to District 7 to make up the difference? Yeah, now, I can provide the, the data that, that I provided to Mr. Wade, but why districts were then moved from what I recommended to him to other other council districts, I don't have that information, so I can't provide that. Okay. I guess we're also realizing we need election commission data in this process. So have we agreed to try to get election commission information to come over? Yes, that's on our uh, list of requests and that precinct information. Mr. Rockenbeck, when you said that you're not sure if what you recommended was actually what we have currently, are you able to show that it is or is not a difference? Yes, there, there are differences between what I provided Mr. Wade and what was finally provided to you guys. Are you, is that information that you're able to send us sooner while we're waiting on the other requested information about precincts and data comparisons? Yes, I believe I can do that. Hold on a second. And Chair, while he's waiting, I know this is a difficult task that we're asking of him, but time is of the essence. I'm coming and going on my internet. No, but we time is of the, Okay, but time is of the essence. So whatever he needs to do, let's try to, so we need that information next week. Somehow from somebody, we need that information because we're running out of time. Yes, uh, especially with our days. Put up. I think that Mr. Black and Black are seeing what you recommended for the precinct and then having your explanations from city mapping will be helpful. Um, and then comparing that to the information we get from Attorney Wade. We do have a question in the chat for you though. Um, is the spreadsheet we received at the first meeting precinct level, is that by racial group or is that general the spreadsheet has total population white population black population other population and hispanic population uh, that's data that's coming directly from the census and their uh, their category categorizations thank you and uh miss guerrero Yes, um, so I just am thinking, I'm, I'm listening to the conversation and I remember at some point when I was trying to gather some like voting information too, with all the precinct changes, um, I definitely understand like the difficulty and you know, that's being discussed about how we can actually not just package that so other folks can get it, but also how useful it will even be for us. Um, it won't be a direct comparison that we'll be able to do some, you know, I'm really starting to feel like maybe too much data is not necessarily a good thing for us. And then particularly if it's going to take some time to compile that in a way that even adds a little, makes a little bit of sense. I'm not sure that um, it really can, it, it really makes a whole lot of sense to try to get too much data and do the full comparison. Um, if there were a way to get maybe of just a bigger picture or a higher level view of the population changes, I know Marshall's mentioned he has um, a map he's worked through. Um, I think that, at least for me, I feel like that could be sufficient to work off of, as well as maybe working off of the current map and adjusting from there. We already know that ultimately what we're looking for is a set you know, a set number as well as looking at maybe community of interest. 
So it could be worth considering just working off of the current map as well and, um, and just having a high level view population changes as context, but not necessarily the details from those previous precincts. And Ms. Herrera, when you say current maps, you mean the maps that were just redrawn or the yes. ones previously before that? I think both 2021 and 2022, but definitely the 2022 since those are the most, most recent. So when you're, so you're saying in your opinion, comparing the 21 and 22 maps versus I, the 10 year prior census. Yeah, or using the 2022 map as a starting place. Okay, um, Mr. Moore, your comment is on that topic too. Yes. Okay. I hear Mr. Lincoln Deckler talk about the maps that he gave to Attorney Wade and the differences that Attorney Wade made. Us as a committee, will we see those maps? I'm sorry, was that question directed to me? Whomever can answer it. Can you answer again, Mr. Moore, towards uh, the I heard you talk about the maps that you gave Attorney Wade and the changes that Attorney Wade made. Will this committee as a whole be able to see those maps? That, uh, well, I, I just sent Brian uh, Bacchus the, the map for what I sent to Mr. Wade. So at that point, it'll be a matter of whether he, so that can be shared. I, I, I have no problem with that. Thank you. Are you able to do that while share that on the screen while we're here? And maybe if we still have questions on that, we can put that still on the agenda item when we're in person and can see it more tangibly next Thursday, since you're already able to find it. Uh, like I said, that the, the, the PDF of, of my recommendations I just sent to Brian Bacchus. I don't know if, if he will be able to put that up on the screen right now or not. I don't have that ability. Um, if you, if, can we give you the ability and you're able to do that? Uh, gee, uh, good question. I don't know. Uh, we can, we can work on Mr. Bachelors, let's work on that so um, he's able to, to show and, and move and talk to us in real time on that. Um, in the meantime, Councilman and Ms. Hyman. I think it's really important that we all look at uh, the map that I think Council, uh, Attorney Wade has done as to get an idea about his thinking about how he's trying to redraw uh, the districts to meet the requirements that are set in the consent decree. Uh, and then I think we can look at it that said uh, in a way that if we need to change that for some reason, we have to make sure that we can keep within the consent decree too. So I think we're, our hands are sort of tied, but we need to see both of them. So. Hopefully that, that map can come to this committee and everyone can look at it. And then we can look at any potential options we have based on the population movement options that are available to us. And that's going to be, you know, sort of hard to do on a Zoom call. I think we're going to have to roll a map out, everyone walk by and look at it in a big conference room and be able to like ask questions and look at where places are because this is a big city of 102 districts. It's going to be almost impossible for us to come up with something unless we can see it in a big picture. So um, I think we need to realize we want to have that information, but let's have it at next meeting. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
I agree, Dr. Woman. Uh, before Ms. Hyman, just a quick question, Mr. Blackenbecker. When you did your precinct recommendations, did you also take into account about the consent decree for the city of Memphis or no? No, ma'am. I have no knowledge of what what those legal ramifications are on the, the council districts. So I was looking at purely numbers, uh, where the population fell and, and uh, assigning districts based just purely on numbers. Okay, that's helpful. That's helpful. Ms. Hyman? That was going to be my question to know that if he had the rationale for the consent decree. And just to clarify, if Mr. Blankenberg Becker sent us his map, the maps we're using are already public or, or should be on the council website. So with his map, we have the full request of the maps because the current maps are already public with the changes made for special district four. Yes, I was already up um, also on the election commission website. Uh, Councilman Warren, you had your hand back up. No, um, okay. Yeah, ma'am. Okay. Um, and, and folks, committee members, I just wanna reiterate the same questions and the same thoughts that we're having about how to understand reasoning behind shifts or no shifts um, and changes and precincts and, and districts are the same things that Memphians and citizens are, are wondering as well. And I'm glad that we have committed to this aspect of transparency, even if we don't, even if we change it at the end of this committee or if we don't, um, still having that factor of this is something that happens every 10 years and very, I wouldn't say very, very complicated um, on, on some fronts, but still having to be done and ensuring that we at least have a, a layman's term understanding of, of simply how things are chosen to be moved. Um, I do, if there's no contention or any more questions or comments on that, I do want to go ahead and jump to subcommittee. Any objection? Okay. Um, so our two subcommittees are communications and mapping. I think we do need to have some suggestions already for how we want to do community communications. Um, I think that we do, like Dr. Warren said, he said a lot of things are going to be more able to be understood if it's laid out in front of us, printed large, largely. And I think that may be the same for folks in the community around Memphis that we're trying to inform and get to a comprehension level as well. Um, if we can go ahead and begin either I'm sorry, Mr. OJ. Um, Mr. OJ's question is, can we, let me go back up what you said. Last meeting, it was stated that the city can split precincts. Yes or no? Uh, I think that's a question for mapping. Um, from my, correct me, um, from my memory of what Attorney Wade said is that we unsplit all precincts. Um, so everyone should, nobody should have a split precinct within district. Um, but I think that can be confirmed by looking on our list. And Mr. Black and Beckler, if you can speak to that as well. Can it be done? Yes. It, uh, well, from a, from a mapping standpoint, yes, I can do that. Uh, whether or not legally we're allowed to do that, I don't have an answer for that. That would be a question for Mr. Wade. Madam Chair. Dr. Warren. Yeah, I think if I remember this correctly from our meeting, some of these precincts are in part of the county and then in the city. So those precincts may be split, but part of the people in those precincts won't be voting in our election. So I think in that perspective, you may have split precincts uh, and we can get the lawyers to correct me if I'm wrong in my memory. Thank you, Madam Chair. So that would be um, Mr. OJ answering that question. So split not being split within districts, but split amongst whether city or county. 
Okay. Um, still monitoring the chat, y'all. So and that is that is correct. We do have several uh, precinct voting precincts along the edge of the city that are jointly city and county. Um, the data when you get the data from uh, the from me that does the population that is purely the population within the city of Memphis. It does not include any population from the the county side. Thank you, Ms. Arjay. Did you have any following up questions for that? Um, I guess when Attorney Wade comes, maybe he can clarify. I just don't I understand that they crossed the, the city line and that's why they can be split, but I'm wondering if we can even legally split them within the city just to help with the population shifting. Like, we were just talking about the precincts being all over the place and very large sizes, and if we can split it down to the census block level legally, then I think we should because it's going to be a lot more helpful in creating the districts. Um, it's definitely legal. I've had split precincts the last election, um, a lot of my precincts were split either between uh, Council Morgan or Council Logan. Um, so it's definitely, if it's not legal, uh, it's definitely <laughs> done before. <laughs> um, but going back to, but I appreciate you bringing that up, Ms. OJ. Um, going back to looking at communications with the community, um, do we have individuals who are wanting to discuss about those communications offline and then bring those recommendations back to our Thursday, February 9th meeting. Um, I would suggest that we are doing face-to-face. -face. Um, it was also suggested last time about a possible website, putting out that information. Um, and as we're doing now, having a committee in and being transparent, I think is another way, having it streamed online is another way of community communication as well. Um, so if we do have individuals that want to serve on this subcommittee, if you can just put your name in the chat um, and then you all are able to get together before we come back on next week for some bona fide things that we can either agree or disagree on, vote on to do for communication. Dr. Hare. So, so one of the things we did in the redistricting process at the county is every time we made any kind of iteration and kind of changes to the maps that we created a website and, and that didn't have to be done this way in, in this process this could just be done on the city on the city council or the city's website we we put the map up so we, we would propose a map it would be discussed and it would immediately go up on the website for people to decipher have questions about it was done it, it, it completely transparent you could any citizen to type in their zip code and find out where they would reside on each map. And we put all, I believe it was 10 iterations of maps on the website, real time, so to speak, uh, at the completion of discussions in the meeting. So that's just one way to create that transparency, put the information out immediately in the public, have a website or some place for them to reside and that anybody can see them any time of day or night. Thank you for adding that. Um, it was also asked in the chat the specific task for each subcommittee um, by Dr. McKinney for so for the two subcommittees, communications and mapping communications is, and then Councilman Morgan, uh, communications is to help decide on the mediums in the ways that we are engaging with the community and getting them the information in real time and then also our recommendations. Um, and mapping is to decide on how we will go about how the maps will be made. Um, but then, of course, the reviewing those will happen in full committee. Um, Councilman Morgan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so is it, you, you said these subcommittees, they would go meet offline and come back with their recommendations. Are the subcommittees not going to be uh, accessible to the public or recorded? I don't think that if we have um, only one council member or if none, that they need to be public or recorded. Um, but I didn't want 
all or we can do it all together. Um, I'm not, is not welcome. A violation. Okay. Council members not welcome at the subcommittee in that case. Council members are welcome. Um, I just asked in the chat if one council member would like to join that subcommittee. Ian Randolph and his Stella said that they would like to be on the subcommittee for communication. Um, for the brevity of time that we have, I would think it'd be best that they discuss and come back. But if we would like to do that as a full body and not have subcommittees and just have that as committee items, if you would like for us to do that, just we can talk about that. Well, I, know, I mean, a lot of the talk we've been having here is one of the main purposes of this is transparency. And I mean, I think their discussion is valuable when you're talking about the specifics of mapping and the reasons why, uh, even if it's raw thoughts that are people, you know, as they're working through the issues, I, I think that's real important to public trust. Uh, so it'd be my recommendation, especially, I mean, in all the subcommittees, that they be recorded, open to the media, open to the public, and at least open to all members, whether members have the responsibility to participate in them or not is different. Um, and also I would request uh, that if there are gatherings of members of this redistricting committee, um, that all members, I guess, at least be invited. I heard about one meeting last week that a number of committee members got together they discussed redistricting and closed doors, and only some members of the committee were invited and others were not. And I, I would hope that that would not happen. I should, I, I, I'm surprised that it happened last week, and I'm hoping it wouldn't happen in the future. Yeah, and it was my understanding that everyone on this committee was invited. Was it not? I, I triple checked my emails before okay. uh, bringing it up, and okay. it. And, and, and so it, it looked like it was a meeting of the members of the committee without council members present. There, therefore, it wouldn't violate sunshine. Therefore, they'd be able to have discussions about redistricting without that check of transparency, which we've been talking about this whole time. Yeah, um, my understanding, it was a community organization discussing redistricting and what that has looked like and how the community should be involved. And then they invited committee members. I myself did not attend, um, but I thought that that was just a info session of an organization just having it and then they just invited everyone. It was not a subcommittee or anything out of the committee as well. Yeah. Much of the work we're having even now is an info session, but if it's relevant to the members of the committee and it's on topic, I think we should be having that discussion, even if it's an info session, in the public sphere. Yeah, it was definitely open to the public, um, but on your about subcommittees, we can have that discussion here. I think that flows more towards transparency and you bringing up that point, then we can go. Uh, so for communication, um, don't, at the suggestion of Councilman Morgan, that I agree with them. Um, so we will not meet offline for that. Send in your suggestions to uh, my email, Mr. Backus. Um, or Ms. Johnson, and we can vote on those on Thursday. We can compile a list and vote on those on Thursday. Um, and then the same for mapping as well. And so that way, those email suggestions will be put out publicly um, at the same time, and so that everyone is privy to the same information at the same time. Any comments or questions or pushback on that? Mr. OGA and Ms. Bennett. Um, I guess the question I have is I thought that the purpose of those committees might be to give additional time that's not available during this time to discuss those topics. And I don't, I guess I would prefer that they're also public and like available, but is that not a possibility to have those committees meet separately to give additional time, then present it to this group um, from that aspect and still make it public or is that not an option? I think I don't want to speak for our council staff, but they're uh, kind of stretched to the thin point is uh, we have this subcommittee, we have this committee, and then as for example, tomorrow is the Blight Task Force Committee. Uh, they may be running out of days <laughs> to host public streamings and um, for meetings. So I did want to take them into consideration because council staff will be the ones actually doing the streaming and the publication of the meeting. Okay. So that I agree with Councilman Morgan. 
Is there a way for us to just record the meeting as it's happening, like audio recording or something, just to have them? Or I, don't know, I just don't know if it's possible. I just am mostly concerned about the loss of time, considering we have like a couple less weeks, and I feel like those discussions are going to be lengthy. <laughs> I don't know. If we, don't, if we can't do it, we can't do it. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Uh, we, I can check with our council attorney and see if that's a good option, and we can let you know and answer for everyone uh, by tomorrow. Time is definitely of concern, April 14th, y'all. Uh, Ms. Bennett. This is a question, one, the, one of the questions that... Um, I wanted to ask, so got the answer for that. But I also wanted to uh, be sure about the what I perceive as an informational session um, that Councilman Morgan is referring to as a meeting. Um, I just want to be clear that it is legal and okay for us to gather information or to get information. Um, I know that it has been uh, said that, you know, this is a complicated process and that uh, it might be difficult for some of us to understand everything that goes into this process. So I found it to be very informative and helpful. Um, is that something that you need to be clear that that does not happen or just want to be clear about, about that? Any response to that? Okay. Um, Ms. Hyman. To that end, I think what is being referred to is the Sunshine Law. So if two council members meet about an item that they have to vote upon, which is the entirety of redistricting. There has to be public notice, the availability of the needs and come, and a recording and an apparatus for there to be public interaction and interface participation. So I think some of what we're doing is an info session, but it directly relates to a matter that the council will be voting on. So if you have two members on your subcommittee, you have to be in a public place to allow the public to come and the media to come because two council members cannot meet in the dark about something they will vote on in a full committee meeting. So I think the topic of what we're voting on is lending itself to full public meetings because everything we do is in discussion and furtherance of a final vote by the council, even our recommendations. So I think that's the kind of difficulty that everyone's trying to maneuver. Yes, that and um, just the capacity of staff as well, even if no council members are present, um, I think should also be considered. Um, I don't think anything that can, uh, to your point, Ms. Bennett, I don't think anything of the community decides to do. Um, everything Everything organizers can do uh, this past weekend is a great example, can influence uh, council. Um, but I don't think that if it's not intentionally involving all council members that it should be an issue. But I think that all everyone on this committee would just be benefiting from knowing any opportunity that the community has that they're doing about information sessions, about redistricting, whether we want to join or not, put it out to our constituents in our district email, um, support it or discuss it on the next meeting. So I don't think I don't think they were trying to hide anything uh, to your point, but I think that having it as public knowledge, more public knowledge than it was, as some folks say it was, uh, may or may not be would be helpful to everyone. Um, I don't think there'd be too much to ask. You just blast the email to everyone. Um, Dr. Warren. And then we'll move to the next item. Uh, Ms. Bennett, um, one of the things you need to, you don't need to worry that you've done anything wrong. Everybody on this committee that's not a council member can talk as much as you want and as frequently as you want to make this work. And sometimes, you know, being able to talk offline with people and get information is very beneficial to be able to figure out how to make things work. And that's sort of hard for us on the council. Sometimes our hands are tied to be able to do that. But 
you don't have to do that. And interestingly, the state legislature doesn't have to do that either. They can all walk in behind a closed door and do whatever they want. They've just made it harder for uh, people on school boards or councils or other governments in this and in the to be able to be able to try to get information and talk to each other and come to compromises. It's not in public eye. That's all, and that's just where we're limited. You're not as a public. You're not because you're not an elected official. You guys should talk and come up with good ideas and bring them to us. That's just my two cents. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman Warren. Uh, Dr. Harris. Yeah, yeah, Madam Chair. I think let me let me let me chime in on this because I was part of that meeting. The the purpose of the meeting was it was kind of called a a redistricting one on one. There were members of the committee that never been through this process, didn't know what it was, and basically I did just a just a snippet of what redistricting is, why it's important. Uh, I talked a little bit about population deviations. Everything that we talked about could have been probably read on the internet uh, or picked up in some article somewhere. So we just we just discussed what is redistricting, how is it done, there were questions about best practices. Uh, we did talk a little bit about previous practices and what and how those compare to what we're doing now. Um, we did discuss a few uh, items about what the map looks like now. We basically looked at that. But primarily we covered what happened with the county commission district. Uh, redistricting process that I was involved in and how we could use those tools to, to help enhance this process. So we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't decide on a redistricting plan at that point. It was really just redistricting one-on-one for those folks that had never been involved in this process before, but may have heard of it, but just didn't know uh, even the questions to ask. Exactly what I mean. That's perfect. Catherine, good morning. Yeah, no, and I'd, I'd say my difficulty with that is, again, there was a discussion about redistricting that half of this redistricting committee was a part of and the other half was not even invited to. Uh, and everything we've done so far through the work uh, is not to, you know, we haven't put forward any maps, we haven't voted on anything. We've been having discussions about this, informational questions. Uh, and when we're talking about transparency, we kind of have to be deliberate about that. And sometimes, I guess, as we go about our day-to-day -day lives, it's not always obvious. Um, but when you get in the public sphere, and we're talking about trying to ha do go through this process in a public way, then I think uh, if we're going to be having, if multiple members of this committee are going to be discussing redistricting, we need to try to do it in the public sphere. It needs to be recorded. Media needs to be available. Uh, and so that the public can, if they choose to, and they may not choose to, um, to be involved or listen on that process, including other members of this committee. And again, as uh, Chairwoman Robin, uh, I mean, Easter Thomas said, you put the invite out there. Some people may avail themselves of the opportunity. Others may not. Uh, but we, we can't have uh, half of this redistrict committee meeting and discussing these topics and the other half not be invited and the public not be invited. Um, it, it creates an atmosphere of distrust um, that we are trying not to have one with each other or with the public. Um, Dr. Harris, and if it's on this topic, it will be the last comment on this topic, so we can move on to the next item. Yeah, yeah I'll be quick. I, I think, Madam Chairman, I think the, I think the gist of that meeting was there was some um, questions that were posed to to, um, to Mr. Wade, uh, and I think there were some committee members that sort of didn't like. They were not given all the information in the layman's terms, and they may they they wanted to be able to come up with some of their own independent thinking and independent research. And most of the discussions around district redistricting, at least with the city, has all centered around one person. Who, who has been kind of the go-to person. And I think there's a little bit of, uh, of a desire to have some independent um, information outside of that, uh, outside of the legal reign that, that members wanted to get. And they wanted to understand the basics of it. And that information will, has not been, at least up, up until this point, given to those folks by, by, by Mr. Wade. I don't think it was personal. I think it was just people just reaching out to find out, you know, you know we just feel one one.
Thank you, Dr. Harris. I'm also reading um, in the chat. Well, let me see the end of that. Um, I think also to keep the public communication and increase transparency between the process and the previous process. Um, I agree, Ms. OJ. Um, so we will send out a mass email tomorrow at the discretion of if we think that, or if our council attorney uh, suggests that we should have subcommittees record on their own and make it public in that sense, um, or if that doesn't need to be done so that we're not wasting the time that we do have, Mr. OJ, and then hopefully we can move on after tomorrow. Um, for other items on the agenda, um, Q&A, and then also our next committee meeting. So are there any questions that we need answered or to add on the list of things that we need to try to have done before the next committee meeting on Thursday, February 9th? watching the chat in the hand okay um so what i have and it'll be better put out on the minutes that'll be sent out tomorrow um we have a list of items that we're requesting from city mapping a list of items we're requesting from the election commission on precincts and then also as well for attorney wade when he does come to see if there's a visual aid that Ms. Hyman brought up that can also be provided to help us understand as he talks through those guidelines and process that he used, um, especially in accordance with the consent decree. And so if there are some things, can we assure Attorney Wade is present at the next meeting? Um, let's, hope, let's hope so that he's present at the February 9th meeting. Um, not sure how you get the communication yesterday about how it was canceled, um, but hopefully we can get him on on the 9th so that we can be able to move forward. Um, closing remarks and we don't have any new business. Um, closing remarks, just once again, thank you all for this committal to understanding, comprehension, and, and transparency of the process. Um, this is not an easy committee to be on, serve on, or chair. And I think that we all are learning as we are going, getting so much clarity. Um, I do appreciate the recommendations that the council members gave on you all as community committee members because you are definitely adding to that process um, and to the value of that. So thank you all for being here. Hopefully that you all are being safe and warm in your home. Um, thank you to the public for also looking on with us, discussing with us. And if you all have any questions to be submitted that you will send those by email and we will address those the next February 9th meeting. If you are not able as a committee member to get your packet that we were provided last time, please let Mr. Backus know and we can have that ready for you at the next meeting. Um, and I think we still have two council members that have not recommended members um, so maybe those spots will be blank and maybe they'll go field next time that we meet. We'll see. Um, but thank you all for being on today. Were there Definitely any other the any other business we need to take up? Oh, oh, Ms. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that any communication was sent out from Mr. Bacchus with the packet information. Is there a way that you guys can have those prepared and ready for the new members that were added? I just, um, yeah, I just said that if you okay. if you didn't receive one, just so we can keep up with it, let Mr. Backus know uh, via email. Yeah, and we can have can that together. Everybody. Yeah, you can add in everybody that was added after the first meeting. I don't think anyone received any communication like that from them. So just two? Just you and Mr. Boyd? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did we add anybody else? Thank you. Well, some people also weren't present. So if you weren't, if you don't have a package, just please do that because um, some people weren't present last time, whether that be council members or committee members. And then we'll have a clear list of who we need to make sure we get that to. So that we're just not making copies to make copies. Um, and thank you, Mr. OJ, for being on as well. Right. All right, any other business before this committee? I know y'all have plenty to do in the snow today. <laughs> All right, well, we will adjourn this committee. Uh, be safe, be warm, and see you all on next Thursday.
Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Bell.